Hello everyone and welcome to Off The Court, your regular guide to all things netball and there is so much to get through. We will talk ANZ, we will talk about pregnancy in netball, we'll talk about getting back on that court, which is something Tamsin Greenway you're about to announce you're going to do, right? <laughs> Don't tempt me, although lockdown's been very oh. good for fitness training. <laughs> Has it? Has it? Yeah, no, hasn't. <laughs> Uh, let's not get onto that subject. We do have plenty to talk about, not least because it's a year since the Netball World Cup. Your your memories of back then, can you remember back then? It was pretty manic. It was pretty intense. What an amazing event. I actually can't believe it's been a year. Um, where to start? The fact that we had different semi-finalists for the first time since 1995. You know, uh, South Africa bumped Jamaica out of there, which is incredible. Um, Zimbabwe, the gems, they became uh, the new queens of, of the African nation. Everyone fell in love with New Zealand winning the title after such a nightmare campaign going into the Commonwealth Games. To turn it around at that time and become world champions was absolutely incredible. Um, but it was two weeks that I will never forget. One, because we were working uh, from morning till night covering every single game, which was incredible. But what an amazing event. And just to say as well, the fans in Liverpool and the whole setup there, the fan village, the atmosphere was something I'd never experienced before. That was the Netball World Cup. That was off the court, thank you. Bye. <laughs> just summed it up. We don't need any more. Uh, but people have been getting so in touch at Sky Netball and using the hashtag off the court. And this from Helen really stuck with me. It said, I delayed my next bout of chemotherapy so I could enjoy being there for four days. It was the best weekend ever. The moment Tracy Neville and the England squad walked out for the opening ceremony, the noise just wow. And what was really beautiful about that is Tracy actually replied just saying, with a heart emoji and, and wow back. And that summed up the Netball World Cup, at least for Helen and for many, many others. We'll get some of your messages throughout the show. But I said we're bursting for this show. We might almost give birth, hopefully not, with our first guest. Let's bring in Ebony Asura Brown. Not ready to give birth just yet, Ebony, but, but nearly not, there, nearly there. Not just yet. Hopefully a couple more weeks. Um, baby needs to like bake a little bit more. But um, yeah, we're really nearly there. It's gone so quickly. Well, that's fortunate because in two weeks time, we'll be back with another off the court. So we'll join you for the live birth then. OK, <laughs> take us back to the, to the Netball World Cup and, and what it was like for you, what it meant for you. I think like Tamsin said, I can't believe it's been a whole year. It's it's literally flown past. But I look back on it now. I think now that you're outside of the bubble of those two weeks and you can only just smile, I think the atmosphere was absolutely electric and to think that it was on UK soil um, I, like I said I remember waking up and um, looking outside the hotel window and just seeing the thousands of fans in the Rose Garden like all there in their decked out in their red ready to support England so when we walked out for the opening ceremony it was I've never experienced anything like it it was just so special and what an occasion to have your friends family supporters all there um, just cheering you all on. That's that's the thing, actually, when you say your friends and your family, that's who you're used to seeing there. But you're right. I, I remember talking to a couple of the players and they said they opened their, the curtain windows in the hotel. Might have been a blind, um, just yeah. uh, embellishing. <laughs> Open the windows and there were people waiting outside the hotel for your signatures to to walk with you to the venues, to talk to you, which which was just something you hadn't experienced before. We definitely hadn't. And it was crazy. Like you talk about fans, they were lined up every single morning um, and the crowd was literally about at least four or five deep. Everyone was raised, like waving their flags and cheering. Um, even when we got back to the hotel, again, everyone was still there cheering, celebrating with us after our wins. And um, security actually had to marshal us in through the back door. And I was like, this, this is definitely a new experience. But um, it was so terrific. So terrific. We saw it, Tamsin, didn't we? When we, we came around the corner and we drove in, we saw those advertising hoardings, the Oasis boards as well with Ebony, you know, with all the players on it too. Yeah, it was incredible. And uh, it wasn't quite the same for, for us as it was for the players, but I remember us just being five minutes from the hotel and from the venue, and yet it'd take you probably 45 minutes to get back just because the fans wanted to chat about the games and who they'd seen and how they impressed. And I have to say as well, I met a few of the players. Eb, you were clearly doing the right thing and having a rest and an ice bath, but <laughs> Rach Dunn and Serena Bob and Joey Harton came down and JD to have a chat. They're all wearing caps down over the head. I was like, guys, what are you doing? And after... 
30 seconds of being out in the open, I, I understood why they were literally just being bombarded for photos and questions. And um, they absolutely loved being in the heart of it. But I, I honestly don't think any of the players have ever experienced that before, that intense in being in an England team. Emily, can I can I ask you about what happens now for you? Because you're going to have a beautiful baby and your your gorgeous family's expanding. Where, where do you go now? Are you still thinking, right, I'm coming back to that court and I'm going to be there for Birmingham for the Commonwealth Games? Um, hopefully, but um, as you say, when you have a newborn or a baby, you never know how much life is going to change. But um, I've com committed to Bath for next season, which I'm really, really excited about for the Super League. And um, I definitely want to hopefully make myself available for England in the future. But at this moment in time, it's just making sure that um, we can have a sense of a bit of normality at home while maintaining my day job and how it works with having a child. But um, I'll never say never. Well, uh, that is that is brilliant news. Um, that and the fact that we're going to get you on in two weeks' time for that live birth. Uh, we've got okay. to let you go. We've got to let you go. <laughs> Ebony, thank you so much for coming on and sharing some of those memories of a year ago. All the best of luck. It's going to be beautiful. And we'll see you back on that court with Team Bath. Thank you very much. Speak to you soon. There goes Ebony. Sorry, short but, but sweet. And that has been far from her career. Her career has just kept giving. And that that's a, a real joy to hear. She's coming back with Team Bath. Tamsin, what about future for, for England? Well, it's going to be interesting, isn't it? And, uh, you know, touching on it, there's been so much about pregnancy and sport and, and female sports um, around at the moment. Loads of different articles and interviews going on. Be really intrigued to see um, how England netball uh, are going to develop that and actually going to actually going to help those players come back because as, as Emily said once you have a child you know you've got to get used to that sort of life at home but you know in the future you'd, you'd love to think if she's playing back at Super League and she's playing at the level she has she can walk back into that England squad and so I'm really hoping that that support will be around her and that we've moved forward over the years to make sure that they, she's going to have that backup when she comes comes back if she chooses to. Yeah Tamsin one of those players that you've you've been through that had the baby come back to court as well when when England needed you. We're going to hear from some of those future roses a bit later too. We've got Fran Williams on the show, Nat Panagari as well. As we remember a year ago at the Netball World Cup, we will talk about the other home nations too. But first up, uh, before all of that, two of the real highlights for me. Oh, actually, I thought we were going to Fran and Nat next. Turns out, <laughs> turns out we've got two other highlights here. Just kidding. You know I don't read a script. Uh, Di and Pam are back. The band is back together. How are we all? The gang. Hey. We're good. We're really good, CB. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm glad that in this time, this lockdown time, you've you've had a chance to go print off some T-shirts with, with myself and Tamsin on them. <laughs> well, just especially for you, Caroline. Yeah, there you, there you both are. No, this is actually, I'm being very nostalgic today uh, because this is the T-shirt I wore for the Netball World Cup semi-finals and it hasn't been washed. Oh, um, it needs a wash but it it takes me back to Liverpool 2019 and what an incredible week we had and um, I've been watching you girls off the courts and loving all your episodes I'm keeping up to date with what's what's been going on I love that you put on a bad luck t-shirt to come and join us because clearly the semi-finals <laughs> was not where oh, it was at well, for England no, but <laughs> but it was such a good it's game. It's about the taking still, part, Caroline. Not. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, about the taking part. Okay, apart, Pam, that was, apart from the T-shirt. Yeah, well, Pam, that was a moment, though. Um, and when we, we think back to the semi-finals and, and then New Zealand going on to win it, what, what stood out from that, that finals weekend, at least, for you? Oh, it was how great those games were. So the first time ever, two semi-finals, only two goals separated um, the winner. So the buzz around those, the, the technical aspects of it, the credibility of the game just grew from those semi-finals. And then going into the final, New Zealand, the dark horse, people have written them off after the Commonwealth Games coming forth. And then Nolene and her crew just really did it in that last game. And to win by one goal, again, so close to these games that um, it just really put netball on the map. And in that week, you had the Wimbledon um, last test, um, sorry, last set tiebreaker. You had Lewis Hamilton winning the Grand Prix. You had the cricket with Stokes in the World Cup and the um, Super Over, whatever that was. We didn't know what it was before then, but netball was also being talked about in that in those conversations. So netball was really put on the map because of the World Cup and especially that semi-finals weekend. Just watching all the teams from all the countries um, 
just participating in it and doing their thing. And the crowd, how amazing were the crowd? And I, I love the Zimbabwe team and their crowd that they bring. They really brought the party. But then the very first game that England walked out, how the crowd erupted. And that just set the competition off right from the start. So I know you said talk about the finals weekend, but the whole thing is just <laughs> the bomb. <laughs> Pam, Pam, can I just pick up on, so New Zealand obviously winning the World Cup and that finals weekend was incredible. We saw the two close games and then New Zealand winning by one goal in the final. Amazing. Um, they brought sort of an old, an older group back and we know about that because we were the old group in 2015. Most of those now have kind of stepped back or taken a bit of time out or retired. Um, but watching the ANZ at the moment, and I have to touch on it because New Zealand have kind of set the precedent. They're now all back playing, which we're all completely jealous of. I know you've been up at 6 a.m. with me tweeting away on the games. Um, we know New Zealand have become this like world dominant force and it happened from that 2019 World Cup. So who have you got your eye on now? Who looks like a future Silver Ferns? Are New Zealand out and about the team that everybody's got to aspire to? Yeah, definitely. And, and like you said, watching these ANZ games, the, the key standout has been the defensive end. Like, there's so many people now that Nolene can pick from to go into that Silver Ferns team. Um, the team for me that's standing out is the Mystics. Um, I'm loving Caraca and Fitzpatrick in that defensive duo. They're the more established um, players, but working with a really young Mystics attacking end. And Nweke and Tuava, she to be a goal attack with them two, I think that would just be amazing. Like, okay, how she can take the ball when she is on that tee hold, um, she holds her space really nicely. And to a very wing attack, how she feeds into that circle. She just no look passes, her timing is spot on. She puts it so far away from the defenders that you, as a shooter, you can just take your time to get the ball. So um, it's really interesting to see how those young ones are developing, playing, playing alongside the likes of the experienced players. And Ekinazio we saw in the World Cup, and that's really when she kind of solidified her name, playing for Pulse um, this season again. That Silver Ferns team is really coming together with some key players that are just thriving with this opportunity and being able to play again, which, as you say, we are all so jealous of. They're having these opportunities week in, week out to play at that top level and to develop that um, Silver Fern game. I'm quite happy just watching it, not playing, Bab. You're all right. But it has been lovely <laughs> watching you two tweet about it too. And and just the, the fact that we can watch it here and, and Sky are showing those games from New Zealand has been another level. It was supposed to be your wedding this weekend, Pam, but we've got you a gift because throughout lockdown, Di's been doing these brilliant book clubs. So Di, you've got, you've got a oh. book for Pam to read this weekend instead of getting married, right? Oh yeah, it's uh, it's actually Joe Wicks Lean in Fifteen. Not that you need it, Pam. Um, oh, that's I've been, <laughs> no, it's it's, I've been watching Joe Wicks and doing quite a few workouts. So that's actually that, that was just a, a side book. That's my bedtime reading. Um, I have got oh. quite a few books actually. Can you hear me? Am I back? We yeah. can. We got you. The excitement I, uh, of Joe Wicks it, did it for you. It did. It did. Everything's falling off the table. I have been um, taking actually a little bit of time out from social media for about oh, it's about four weeks, and I'm I'm sort of back on it now. Um, but I read this book, Digital Minimalism, by Cal Newport, about my and it was a detox from from social media. Um, now I'm going to apply my time more efficiently when I'm on social media. Instead of, you know, just scrolling and having when you have like five or 10 minutes in the day, I've decided to do more productive things, obviously keeping up with my sporting knowledge. But it's allowed me a little bit more freedom to do other stuff, including reading more books. Now, Caroline, I know you weren't a massive fan of this one, The Flat Share, Beth O'Leary, which was recommended in the book room. I've uh, moved on to the second book, The Switch, which I'm I'm loving. And if you want to dive a little bit deeper, Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth. Highly recommend. Lots of concentration needed for this. But I think Tamsin has got similar books to this around her right now with uh, with children yeah. there. T, is that I'm, right? I'm doing some, some deep reading. Deep. I don't know. Oh, deep. Well. <laughs> deep reading. <laughs> Yeah, at least, yeah, at least I'm the only one of us that's actually still concentrating on the netball. Uh, so well yeah. done, everyone. <laughs> Di, 
<laughs> it's a delight and it was gorgeous spending all that time with you and with Pam and with Tamsin and, and the team in Liverpool at the Netball World Cup and we will rekindle that romance very soon fingers crossed sometime in the autumn Yay. we'll be back and on that court together back, take Netball care you two <laughs> okay you can you can you can go well, see, go no, go go I just go. wanted to say I just wanted to mention a couple of things about the Netball World Cup, if that's okay. Oh, go on then. <laughs> yeah. Go. Pregnant pause. Yes, um, I wanted to mention the, uh, the the camaraderie that I saw. You know, netball as a sport, the most popular female sport in the UK, as we know. Pam touched on it. The crowds they were absolutely magnificent, and the teams they fed off that that theatre, that stage. Um, throughout the 10 days it was absolutely fantastic to see different styles of netball on this world stage and it did so much for the sport we just we need to keep that momentum going as you girls have spoken about over the last few weeks um on off the court and it's brilliant to see live netball back on sky um and as a as a team i loved working with each of you because we supported each other so much and it represented what was going on on the courts at the Netball World Cup. So I've got some amazing memories and Caroline, thank you so much for your endless supply of cups of coffee and, and sweets and sugar that, that kept us going. But it's all about, Netball is all about connection, isn't it? And that's yeah. the reason we're all here to connect with each other and to provide um, sport at the highest level. So thanks girls and i loved working with you last year and i look forward to working with you again hopefully later in the year or early next year yeah that was so a fun. party yeah. political broadcast by die <laughs> uh, die thank you as always big and good night. to you and good night uh, and to, to pam Bye. to uh, pam and die part of our team every week of course when we get the netball back up and going they are the team on Sky Netball. Um, I mentioned that detox mm -hmm. at Sky Netball. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, use the hashtag <laughs> off the court. All right, let's pick up on that announcement from England then about their players. They're going to be part of the next year of the international squad. Having a quick look through it, Tamsin, you've had some time to digest it now. The the P1 route, so this is the, the normal route going through. Uh, we've got Kadeen Corbin yeah. in there, Imogen Allison, Guthrie Gibson, Oisola Quashi, Marshall, Drakeford Lewis, Panagari. Cobden, Williams, Fisher, Clark, Parsons, Cardwell and Malcolm and then the P2 route. So this is the players essentially over playing in Australia that will come through pretty much as expected. Harton, Housby, Francis, Guskus, Shimon, Mentor, Pittman and Haythorne Thwaite. Any standout surprises for you? Oh, well, I think um, quite defence heavy in some of, some of those areas in the P1, understandably, you know, looking with Ebony expecting. Um, your, and obviously a few of those players coming back from injuries and stuff. So we've got uh, Vicky Osola, I'm really excited that she's put a, a hat in the ring now and she's put herself in there, um, had some outstanding seasons at Loughborough Lightning. So it's great to see her coming through the ranks. Obviously, you've got your Fran Williams in there, Raz Quashi. Um, so, yeah, some really exciting talent in that in that mix. And I'm just hoping they get opportunities this year as well. You know, we, we've we seen what happened when the likes of players like Amy Carter got that opportunity. So hopefully players more like Gabby Marshall will get onto that court and, and George Fisher getting to stand up and be that starting shooter for a while because that group will be playing out in Australia. It'd be great to to have some of this young English talent getting a go in this year. I'm so glad that you didn't say I wouldn't have picked uh, Fran Williams or Nat Panagari because they're going to join us Awkward. now on off the court. She'd have you in your team. It's all right. You've been picked. Hello, both of you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Congra congratulations, first off, on on being in in the team again. I know no one takes it for granted. Fran, what's what's it going to be like another year in that that red dress of England? Yeah, I'm really, really excited. And yeah, as you say, I never take it for granted. Um, it's always a privilege to be selected um, in some capacity to represent your country and train alongside some of those athletes. And well, all of those girls are so inspiring to train with. So yeah, I'm really excited. And that for you, after a difficult time with, with an injury, but you'd had that taste of being in an England team, that taste of success too, to be back in it with the girls. Yeah, I'm really thankful, like Fran, really grateful just to get um, picked again and be representing your country. It's just phenomenal. And obviously, it's always the kind of the dream every year to get picked for the full time programme. So really thankful, obviously, yeah, due to my injury as well and not being able to put the performances out. Just really grateful for that. Good job. We've got um, Coach Greenway 
with us because Tamsin, I know you've worked closely with, with Fran in, in particular, and you were talking about that defensive end and now the future for England. Yeah, it's really important, isn't it? Um, we know Jeeva Mentor is, is the world-class goalkeeper, um, but we know she also won't be around forever. And, and we saw what happened at the World Cup, sadly, with Leila Guscott getting her injury, how important it is to bring these youngsters through and make sure they've... Um, they're having opportunities and, and Fran got that opportunity at World Cup. I thought she was outstanding. She, she knows I'm a big fan of her and she's um, an awesome goal defence. I think, Fran, I guess for you, looking looking at this and, and seeing those P1s, we've seen Beth Cobden's in that P1, so she might have come back from Australia to play. I don't know that whether she's going to be playing Super League. How important is it that this Super League gets up and running when it can? But also, do you have your eye on sort of playing overseas as well? Is that kind of the making of an international player now or, or can you guys prove that you can do it over here? Because there's a lot of youngsters on that group that will be playing in the Super League. Yeah, I think um, it's great that there are so many defenders, you know, in and around that England squad as well, because it just makes the competition at training, um, you know, really high and that standard, it definitely pushes us all to be, you know, training at our best. So I think that's a good thing. And also I think it's good that we've got equally as many defenders playing out in Australia and some that are playing all of their netball in the Super League. Um, and yeah, I'm obviously at the moment, we, it's kind of undeniable to say that the Australian League is obviously of that higher standard. And so, yes, I would love the opportunity to play at that level where it is higher at the moment. But I also equally think that our Super League is just growing and growing. And that is why it is so important that we can start to, you know, play as soon as possible over here um, so that all of that younger talent doesn't kind of get lost or wasted or any growth that stunted by um, not having enough competitive match play. So yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get things up and running relatively soon. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it, Nat, about not falling behind when you see New Zealand up and running and Australia up and running too. And how you as, as a player here in the Super League get that balance so that come international, that standard is there. Yeah, definitely. That's something that we're going to now have to deal with, just seeing kind of the other side of the world starting their performances. Obviously, we're very jealous and envious eyes at the moment, um, watching a lot, a lot of them starting. So, yeah, we're going to have to kind of build up our training. Obviously, some of us haven't been training for a while due to rehab and injury, but also the girls as well get taking that time off court, which wasn't expected. So, yeah, we're going to have to get straight back in there when it's possible and when we can start training at that intensity going. But I have no doubt that we'll, we'll be ready in time when the kind of international season hopefully does restart. And you've been, you know, captain in, in the Super League. You've been part of the leadership structure as well with, with England. Tell us about those. You're a young player too. I'll give you that. But, but those other <laughs> young players coming through that, that England future team. When you look at it, do you see a team, a squad that can mix it and will be up there with Australia and New Zealand? I, I think definitely. I think kind of we've shown that in kind of the last few years and those performances. And I think a lot of us have said it being in the full time programme for a little while. We'll take it, young player, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> we'll take that. But um, I think there's that that fear is definitely gone. And I think a lot of players may have said that and um, we can put those performances out and we can get those wins. And I think the girls obviously proved that um, at the Commonwealth Games. And obviously, unfortunately, we were just unlucky at the World Cup in that semi-final um, versus New Zealand to get in that final game. But uh, there's so much talent. And obviously, with Fran on this call today, there's so many young players coming through that I'm so excited about. I'm lucky to um, have that experience and be, I suppose, a little bit older head and help maybe guys so but I think the future is really exciting and what we have in the Super League and in the Roses programme. Well it's so lovely to see you back training as well I know you've been out running seen the jumping as well on your, your Instagram uh, well worth a follow of, of Nat on there too. Fran are, are you somewhere exotic at the moment? I mean it looks very very hot very she she. <laughs> yeah I'm um luckily I managed to get away when they said that you can you know travel safely so um, I'm in France for a little bit because we've been given some downtime and hopefully we'll be able to, they're just going through a few more final plans and then hopefully there'll be some exciting news about when we can restart training. Um, but yeah, all of us players have been given downtime at the moment, so I'm enjoying a bit of rest. Although I do actually think the weather's probably better at home than it is here in France, um, where I am today. It's woke up and it's raining, which is not what I came for, but... <laughs> but don't worry, you, you only went there away. for the entertainment. 
the entertainment, which is us calling yeah. you up front. Yeah, it's gorgeous here. Don't yeah. come back. It's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually, I thought she was in Sunny Coventry. I thought maybe the wasps had got back together. I, I didn't know what yeah. she was doing. It looks very much like Coventry, where I was for a few years, Fran. What do you think? Classic Coventry interiors going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nat, Fran, lovely to see you today and see you back in that, that squad as well. All the best for the, the coming months and we'll see you on that court very soon. Thank you. Thank Cheers, you. Guys. Nat Panagari and Fran Williams, part of that England Roses programme for the next year. And you, Tamsin, as coach of Scotland, the problem is it's great. It's great that they're all back in it. But we don't know which international fixtures will be played over the, the coming months. We don't know what that's going to look like. Yeah, there's rumours that the England uh, Autumn Internationals will still go ahead against Jamaica, whether that becomes in front of fans or not. You know, there's there's talks whether INF are going to freeze rankings. We've had that discussion. There's so much going on in the international world at the moment. I guess they, they both were being really positive about it. I guess when you're looking at the ANZ at the moment and how many young Kiwi players are getting exposure and out on court, you're kind of looking at this season for England going... Phew. You know, these players need to get back and get some kind of competition because we do not want to miss out on, on a year of, of progress. And that's kind of what I'm looking at as a Scotland coach. You know, this was my building year. This was my go in, meet the squad, uh, build the culture, decide how we wanted to play. And I'm going to get to sort of the end of the year going, oh, you know, how have we been? Like, we're talking to our players at the moment going, I can't even select a group until I've seen them all. And when that will be, when mm. I can have them all in playing netball, um, is still very much up in the air. So it's, it's uh, we're, it, look, I'm not trying to be negative. We want to be positive about the situation and, and England netball and the governing bodies are doing great work behind the scenes to make sure we get back playing. We've all got to remain positive and start being really creative with the ways that we work with our teams. I'm doing a lot of online content with, with Scotland at the moment. Um, but for Jess Selby, I guess she will be looking at it going... You know, I'm watching these young sisters develop overseas. I need to make sure that my girls are getting the same kind of exposure. Interesting that you mentioned your team, Scotland. They finished 11th at the World Cup, uh, Northern Ireland 10th. Just seeing some of those messages at Sky Netball about the World Cup and memories of it a year ago. Uh, Lucy says everything. It was amazing. Uh, Jan, all of it going to Liverpool, watching some matches live with my friends, my amazing friends. The atmosphere, amazing. Lots of uh, amazing food. My best bit was getting picked to take the ball onto the court for South Africa, England, with a wig, a flag, and a homemade tutu <laughs> on. Uh, uh, just, just briefly, because we can get our final guest on in just a, a moment, Tamsin. That the performance by Scotland, difficult for you to, to comment now and, and Northern Ireland, but where would you hope that those two teams would be come the, the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham? Look, I think, I think Scotland have been realistic. And when I had the first chat with, with Claire Nelson about coming into this role, you know, Scotland are still sitting eighth in the rankings, but their performance at the World Cup didn't back that up. They finished 11th. Um, the big thing for me is to make sure that we, we match up that positioning. That's what we want to look at at Commonwealth Games and at World Cup. You know, the reality is you have to qualify for those competitions first and then you have to put out the performances. The big difficulty for all these nations, Caribbean, Africa um, and the home nations, is that they don't get the opportunities against each other. So you almost go into um, a competition totally blinded by the different styles. So that's something we'll have to address. And, and I and F and O are looking to address it as well, because when you have someone like Zimbabwe burst onto the scene as they did at, at Netball World Cup, you want to make sure they can carry on that momentum just as much as those top four or five nations do as well. Well, let's bring in our final guest of Off the Court this week, Sam Bird, London Pulse uh, CEO, Director of Netball, Chief Bottle Washer, doing a bit of everything at, at London Pulse at the moment. And we've got you on to talk about positive future. And Tamsin was just reflecting then on, on the Netball World Cup and how we keep that going. And there has been a tendency of us all during during lockdown and, and during the pandemic just to go, ah, what's going to happen now? But a Pulse, you're trying to do something positive about that. Yeah, good morning. Yes, we are. Um, it, it, we felt very early on that there was either we were either going to sit and worry about this and not be very proactive or that we would actually uh, use this time off the court to reach out to our communities and um, try and continue to promote the game. And as Tamsin said, the World Cup was a great platform for that. And we've used the time to reach out to um, community in London, both corporate and at grassroots. And that's led to some really good interest in the club and led to some exciting um, deals that we're 
we're working on and we're we're able to announce. So um, we've we've tried to be really positive about um, really keeping netball in the public eye and trying to grow our numbers so that the sport doesn't dwindle. Yeah, there's a, there's a few things. I love you've got a new event happening, but I also love that you're doing this virtual online pathway. So. I mean, maybe not me, Sam, although feel free to disagree. I could sit at home on my sofa and and apply. Is that right? Try and come and be part of your team. How does it work? Well, sadly, it's only for pathway, but um, yes, oh. you, you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, we wanted again to give people an opportunity to have something to work towards. And um, we have lots and lots of um, talented athletes in London. And I attended the trial last year, and I have to say, it was a bit of a minefield in terms of trying to select. There were over 400 athletes there. And I, I came away from that feeling like we really needed to give these girls a better opportunity to be seen and so uh, and to really be clear that we were picking the right athletes. And so this um, program gives them six weeks to practice the skills we want them to. It gives them um, some strength and conditioning targets and some ball skills targets. And it means that they can practice them, upload them, and then the selectors will look at those um, attributes before they see them play. And for me, that just gives them a better chance to really get spotted in amongst a huge number of trialists. Tamsin, it's, it's those sort of almost basic stats, but we see it in the, the NFL, don't we, when they, they get players on trial. You've got to hit those targets first, which seems a sensible thing to do. Yeah, definitely. And and you know, I'm a big fan of online content and being creative with it. And I think it's so important for the game because I, I think what we've seen with the likes of Netball being shown regularly on Sky now and uh, being online as well, that it, it improves players' games. They get to know teams, the, the brand Netball builds. And so it makes sense to move it into this sort of training selection period as well. And I just want to pick up on something Sam said there about... Um, 400 girls being at, at trials and I'm guessing for pathway we're talking under 17s maybe under 19 so there's a, a an age range there I know this happens at every single club that we have that amount of players there's that amount of interest of, of players wanting to get onto the pathway and we know that to make it to Super League it's a very few that are going to actually get there and Sam being, being involved in the Futures England Futures and seeing what's happening in New Zealand at the moment how important is it that we keep developing our pathway over here and start creating more opportunities for those players to play especially after covid yeah um it's absolutely crucial what what we don't want to be seeing happen in 10 years time is a big gap of where our next talent is because we've lost netballers either to other sports or even worse just young girls not doing enough sport at all um so i think it's really really important that we are uh, creative and keeping them engaged in the game. Uh, we're trying to encourage our girls to watch the the ANZ on Sky as well, and just to get, get as much netball information and content as they can, so that they stay engaged with the game and for them to be ambitious as well, for them to to want to try and get into a, a Super League team and to enjoy playing for the Pathway team and enjoy their netball. So it's really really important. I know that people can find out more by checking you out on social, London Pulse on social, but also that there's a, a dedicated web page online now on the London Pulse website to all things Pathway and the new events that are happening. Sam, thank you for coming on. Thank you for, for showing a bit of that positivity too. Netball still continuing and very much alive with London Pulse and what they're doing there too. Tamsin, that's almost it from us this week. Uh, it's been jam-packed. We didn't have a live delivery. Maybe next time. Uh, the ANZ, though, Sam's watching it. It's great to hear she's got her young players watching it too. Who should we be looking out for over the, the coming weeks then? Because you can see it all on Sky. Uh, yeah, well, the three top teams, Pulse, uh, Tactics and Mystics. I am, I'm just going to say, I'm a Mystics fan. I am just a Mystics fan. And I need to pick up what Cookie said earlier about Oh, would she love to be a goal attack with Weki and Toei Ava? I just want to bring her back to her days at Team Bath and Surrey Storm. Rachel Dunn, Pamela Cookie, Tamsin Greenway. I mean, there was some magic happening back in the day as well. So uh, they are the team to watch. Uh, any young player wants to be inspired off the back of things that Sam Bird was saying. Watch them. Carry on watching the ANZ Premiership. Keep getting behind netball. We will get it back in this country. And let's just remember how amazing it was just literally 12 months ago, how much we were talking about it and how much momentum there was off the World Cup.
So you're saying that you're the magic to their mystics. Is that right? Something like that. Mm, something <laughs> like that. Uh, I'll leave you pondering that. I'm off to get a T-shirt made up with uh, Tamsin Greenway's magic on it. She wears a, a magic hat as well. Uh, Tamsin, thank you as always. Hashtag off the court to be part of the conversation. Go watch the ANZ. You can watch it across Sky. Just go onto the Sky Netball online. Follow us at Sky Netball and you can see which games are coming up next. We will see you very soon. Goodbye. Sky Sports. Feel it all.